Christmas Clatter, you know, we always like to find the uh, independent artists that are pu- putting out quality Christmas music that uh, I know you would love to hear. And uh, we continue that tradition. We're uh, going back to Denver for the first time in a, in a month or, or for the second time, I should say, in a month or so. And I'd like to introduce you guys to Tony Mead, who has a Christmas album that uh, came out last year, but because of uh, what last year was. He feel like it didn't get the push it deserved, and I agree with him. I, I was able to hear the album and was blown away by Tony's work because it is, I don't like to use the word different because different can kind of mean like in a negative way, but it was unique because of the, the song choices and the styling, and I just fell in love with, with Tony's uh, music as a whole, and Tony... Thanks so much for agreeing to join me here on Christmas Clatter. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Now, I always say that people that that um, put together whole Christmas albums don't do it just because it's something to do. They have to have a deep love for Christmas. And you, sir, uh, with this album called Wassel, have must really love Christmas because you got some deep cuts on there. Anybody familiar with the deep cuts? Oh, yeah. Station on uh, satellite uh, radio, you grab some deep cuts, my friend, and some of these I've never heard before, and that is that that blew me away because I, I I'm I've been in eyeball deep in Christmas for years and years and years, so to come across a few new Christmas curls was very exciting. That was that was part of the concept um, when I first came up with the idea was I wanted to do. Uh, I want to do some stuff that people that is very mm-hmm. traditional um, and um, but also stuff that people in America might not have heard. Like a lot of those songs, like especially all the songs that end in the word Carol, like the Sussex Carol mm-hmm. and Coventry Carol and so on. You know, if you were to go to England and go to uh, a Christmas, say, you know, church concert or something like that, those songs would be very familiar to them. To the, but in the, the States, not so much. Um, and also I wanted to do stuff that was, you know, very, I have a, you know, I have a thing for medieval music anyway, even though, the, you know, in my normal musical life, I do, you know, the power yeah. pop rock and roll. Uh, but I have a, you know, a lot of love for that kind of music, uh, medieval music and Renaissance music and just, you know, older music in general, and especially older uh, English and European music. Um, so getting to find those, you know, and a lot of my new a little bit, but, um, Getting to getting to do those and then try to sort of update not update right. that's not right the wrong word but re rearrange those for the kind of sound mm-hmm. that I do um, was really fun but also a challenge because there's there's certain times you have to go with the flow of those right. songs you know because of the you know there's they're, they're not always especially medieval songs aren't necessarily made for a four yeah. four beat you know um, they do their own thing there's extra beats in there because that's the way yeah. the words are you know and you have to go with it. Sometimes you can make it work, and sometimes you can't. Sometimes you have to to go with the way it was originally yeah. done. Well, that explains a lot, especially listening through the through this album several times. It's like it ha- kind of had that old world feel, you know, for lack of a better word, word in, in some of it. But it was like layered on top of with like a, a more matter, modern tone to it, and that's one of the things I really loved about it because it seems like a lot of people will pull a traditional song and then they'll just either make it traditional. Or they'll just rearrange it in in a, in a modern way that it, it's almost I don't want to say unrecognizable. Just a, it doesn't have the same spirit that the song originally had, you know. Mm-hmm. And and that's one thing I. It's really more about loved. them than it is the tune. Yeah. Right. That's the one of the things I really loved about these songs that you picked. It's like it it, it kept that that spirit about the song, but you layered you just layered in some more modern feel. It's not like you just totally revamped it. You just kind of added a layer to it yeah you know which was and there were and you know there were certain songs in there like uh gabriel's message um you know a couple other ones that i've actually heard mm-hmm. other people do right. uh like yeah. sting you know he's done that song a couple mm-hmm. different ways and so it was also a matter of a you know not only do i want to do it you know sort of my way but I also want to make sure that i'm not copying these other versions mm-hmm. that i've heard right. of the song because otherwise you know i love sting's version but i don't want right. to do sting's version of, you know, yeah. give message, right, so. and this was a mass undertaking for, for those that haven't had a chance to look it up. Eighteen songs you put on this thing, mm-hmm. and and that was that was that was song creep over time because I originally 
originally had the idea to do it back in at the end of 2012, but at that point it was mm-hmm. a little too late to do anything with it. And then I kind of started working on it the next year, and I kind of you know kind of tooled around with it for you know m- many years after that. It was always this little labor of love side project that I had, and I was like, you know one day I'll put this out, you know I'll draw, it, I'll surprise whatever. And then uh, so it was a lot of it was mostly done. Some of it was a little bit done. Um, and I, when I originally had the idea, I think it was going to be like eight or nine songs. And then, I was, then eventually it was like, well, let's do 12 because, you know, 12 and Christmas are kind of a thing, you know? And, and then it just grew and grew and grew as I thought of more songs that would be great to put in this format, you know? Um, the original concept for the song choice was, uh, stuff that I liked, but that wasn't the traditional, first of all, I wanted to do only do things that were, you know, much older and sort of in the public domain and, and stuff like that. But I didn't want to do the songs, you know, like Joy to the World and you know, the songs that everybody does and everybody knows. I, I wanted to, to stick to stuff that I really liked, but also stuff that uh, people know without knowing that they know it. Like they, they, would, they would recognize the melody, but they wouldn't necessarily know what that song is if you asked them. So um, that was the first sort of chunk of songs that, that made it on the list. And then I started thinking, you know, there's all these cool... Um, European songs that Americans don't know that would be really cool to do. And then there was a few of them, like, you know, that I just like, you know, uh, We Three Kings is, is, was one of those, you know, that I just have to do that because it's one of my favorite right. Christmas songs. Of all time. Right. Yeah. That is actually one of my favorites as well. It's, it's one that uh, I don't know if I've ever heard a version I hadn't liked on it, but uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Which is completely apocryphal, by the way. It has nothing yeah. like there's no evidence of any of this, you know, yeah. for real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is not, not even in the Bible. It's like, um, but it's just a great melody yeah. and the spirit. Yeah, of it, it is. It's great. a great melody and and something about those uh, songs and minor chords always seem to always be a little bit more fun than the others for some reason. But uh, do you have a? And they like their they like their minor keys yes. in the medieval times. I mean, they, yeah. they like their minor. Keys. I can't say I blame them too much, but. Uh, is there a certain tie tie to these songs, you know, through your family or through your travels or something that just kind of sparked this interest? Mm, no, uh, it was more, it was really more on my, yeah, I guess you might say it's sort of my life as a musician and as a music fan. Um, you know, even if you're, you know, you, you can be a fan of all kinds of different music as a musician, even if it's not necessarily the stuff right. that you do, you know. Um, and as someone who's also really interested in history, and uh, especially medieval European history and stuff like that. Um, this kind of stuff really, you know, it, it kind of gets me in a special place. I mean, even the title, uh, wassail, you know, is an old English, an old Anglo-Saxon mm-hmm. expression. It's a, it's a version right. of that expression, which is a uh, wish to heil, which means, you know, I wish yeah. you health, basically. And, but, you know, over the centuries, it became associated with people going door to door at Christmas time knocking, you know, asking for stuff and saying wassail. And then because it was associated with Christmas, it became a you know, right. Christmas expression. Like the, the most modern a- analog we would have would be like right. trick-or-treating, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the act of trick-or-treating is one thing, but also people associate it with Halloween because it's supposed to happen right. Halloween. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah um, I have a, uh, uh, about three songs here I, I want to let people listen to segments. They're about, I don't know, 30 seconds or so a piece. And I actually want to, start at the end of the album your last song here we come a wassling because i had a feeling mm-hmm. because listening through it it's like the, the first you know 20 30 seconds of this song really to me really captured you know the the feel of the album in a nutshell and uh so i have i have, I have the first uh, 30 seconds or so of this this song here uh, here we come a wassling. Here we come a wassling among the leaves so green. Here we come a wandering so fair to be seen. Love and joy come to you, and to you you wassle too. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. And God send you a happy new year. I just love that because you have that that count in on that song. That's something I never heard mm-hmm. on that song. And then you just have this nice driving acoustic guitar. But then you have 
at least one tambourine in the background, and I think I might hear two. There's there's a tambourine and jingle then there's bells. jingle bells. Okay, I, you mm-hmm. know, and there's also like there's a there's to, for the sort of the yeah. percussion. There's there's also like a uh-huh. shaker and there's a bunch of these like stomping right. on a floor. I was gonna say that because I was trying to kind of get trying to get the feeling of a bunch of people sitting around right. in a pub. That's what I was along. gonna say. I was gonna yeah. say that wasn't a bass drum. I thought it was somebody stomping, you know, like keeping time mm-hmm. with their foot and and you know yeah. it wasn't just like a, a thump 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 bass drum sound so it was like like i said earlier it was like layers he took you know she took the modern like a you know a modern like rock count in and then you gave it this you know driving acoustic guitar riff but then you had that underneath with the shakers and the bells and the tambourine and the guy stomping had this like like i said before this old world sound and and even the vocals were like true to tradition and i just Mm -hmm. i just thought that little bit just kind of for for those that hadn't had a chance to go uh, check out this album. It just is kind of what it was. Well, also the 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 chorus bit, you know, the love and joy come mm-hmm. to you. That bit, that, uh, traditionally, that goes. It's at a different time uh, than the rest of it. You know, everybody goes. Everybody slows that part down. And I want to know. I want to right. keep this. You know, I want this to feel like here's a bunch of drunk people in a you know right. a pub singing this song, and we're just yeah. pounding it out. Yeah, it it was it was it was really. Like I said, it just really just kind of summarized everything in this album, and uh, and it was just fantastic. Now there's some songs we'll get to where it's like the drums are really pronounced and 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 kind of mm-hmm. a, a driving force. And but uh, you know through that through the album, it, I'm a big album guy, and my listeners hear this all the time, especially when I talk to musicians. I'm a big album guy, and I just love you know starting at the beginning and then going through to the end. You know, no skips, and 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 I always tell people, you know, that the art of active listening is is kind of gone in music. It's just kind of you just put it on and you do whatever and and stuff and and this. Well, and like yeah, the art of sequencing an album right. is and a thing that's that, one you know, thing people yeah. need to think about. Absolutely, about. that's one thing I always ask uh, artists about to have albums. Is like, how in the world did you put these songs in this order? And you know, and what was your your th- feelings and thoughts on it because it, you just don't take the songs and as they get finished, you just throw them in. Oh, this first one finished. It's the first song. Mm-hmm. It's like, you gotta, it's, 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 you know, it's like something you spend a lot yeah. of time thinking about. Uh, and a lot of it's based on, you want to have a sort of curve, uh-huh. a dynamic curve of energy and also theme mm-hmm. and also like technical things like key. You want to make sure you don't have two songs that are back to back that are in the mm-hmm. same key. And that can get really frustrating at times, yeah. you know, because I'll have these two songs that go great together in every other way, or I really need to feel these, everything else is yeah. perfect. I need to fill these two spaces, but they're in the same key, like, you know. So, um, yeah, that's that, you know, sequencing an album is a whole, a whole world, especially a really long album like this, because the way I had to think about it was almost go way old school and think about it if you were doing, I say, a multi disc, uh-huh. you know, uh, vinyl set. Right. You know, how would you put, how would you do side A, you know, record one, side A, and then record two, side B, and then record two, side A, and record two, side yeah. B, and have that, have it broken up like that. So it has a little sequence in with, within that, and then have the whole thing work together. Yeah. I always just imagine like one of those uh, conspiracy theorists with all the yarn and the thumbtacks and stuff, you know, going everywhere. <laughs> just, you know, just, you're at a... Oh, I got spreadsheets, <laughs> dude. Like, I, I, I literally had to do it on a spreadsheet. You know, you put all the songs in there, what uh-huh. key it's in, kind of rate it in sort of energy level how long it is and then you kind of move them around and yeah. make it work you know and then and then you come up with two and it's like two songs are flipped you know 10 and 11 you know and you're like and someone's like well, maybe you're overthinking it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it is um it is great i you covered a song in here i, I don't have a clip on it but uh, one that i hear and i wish it would um have new life because it is um i think it's a song that that people forget about i mean there's some modern takes on it but the holly and the ivy i always always thought it was a song that and people are familiar with it don't get me wrong it's not like it's you know no people don't know it but it's one that i think just is it just always stands out to me when when i hear somebody do it and i think it's just the melody of that song that that's so Mm -hmm. good and and i'm so glad you covered it it's very very english very in this sort of form, which is why I ended up doing it in that uh-huh. round, 
where you have the repeating, yeah. you know, you have the kind of like row, row yeah. your boat kind of thing. Uh, because it is, it is one melody that just kind uh -huh. of, you keep going through the verse. There's no bridge right. or anything like that in there to break it up. And there's no, there's no verse chorus. It just does yeah. one thing. So doing it in a round gave it a, a way to add in some dynamics and make it change and do some yeah. cool stuff, but while keeping that core, because I've actually heard singers do it that yeah. way anyway, like a choir do it with that sort of yeah. way. And, and uh, I don't know, it just always just, that song always sticks out to me. You know, it's just one of those things, Cer certain songs just hit you and there's really no explanation why. And, and any, yeah. anytime I hear that song and I really love the way you did your rounds and, and stuff on that. And, and, uh, and things i had a whole list of songs i was wanting to pull and it's like i always try to keep it at about three and that's one that i waffled on and you know putting it on there and stuff and and then i saw it up here on my notes and it's like man i really should have pulled that one because it's really really good but i'll leave it in as a teaser for those that uh, want to hear what we're talking about just just run over and check out tony's tony's album and, and hear it but mm -hmm. The most obscure song on there is the middle song. You know, because I named the album Wasail, there had to be a bunch of right. songs with Wasail. Right. You know? And um, so the first one is obviously Here We Come a Wasling, the one yeah. just played. And that, I kind of knew from the beginning that's how it was going to mm -hmm. end. And then I found this other Wasailing song, the first, which right. is the first song, uh, Wasail was all over the town, which I actually found that Blur, the British band Blur, had done this really obscure cover of Back in the oh, 90s. Wow. And, and I'm like, that's a really cool tune. I looked up, like, you know, I heard the original versions. I'll add that because it, you know, it sort of bookends the, the record. And also being able to do that first song in a way that it sort of builds to the layers it starts, you know, with just vocals. Mm -hmm. And then you have some acoustic guitar. So here's the folk thing. And then you add in a little bit. You know, and then it ends with all the electric guitars and the drums mm -hmm. and the whole nine. And it's like, oh, we've moved into this modern thing. And it kind of stands in for the whole yeah. record in a way, you know. And then this, the middle song, which is called The Gower Wasail, uh -huh. is just this obscure song that I happened on. It's from the 19th mm -hmm. century. Um, and it's, uh, I think it comes, it comes from a town called Gower in Wales. And that was a result of the, I had another song that I was going to do, uh, There Is No Rose of Such Virtue, that I couldn't figure out an arrangement yeah. for. And I was running out of time. I said, I want to do something else. And I found this other song, and I did that song in a day. Yeah. And like the whole thing, soup to nuts. And just love it. You know, it's just one of those super surprising tunes, but nobody knows that song. And I play it for them. I've never heard this, but I love it. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just super fun. Right. Well, <clears throat> I have uh, several listeners from the UK. And so if any of you are familiar with uh, Gower Wassell or even Gower itself, just leave the comments below and, or uh, hit it, hit me or Tony up on uh, social media. We'd love to hear from you. And, and, uh, See if that song still sticks sticks around in your hometown or not, you know, because that's that's one mm -hmm. I didn't know. Uh, the Covenant Carol and the Wexford Carol I didn't know uh, of this. The, mm -hmm. the Sussex Carol I didn't think I knew, but there, I guess I didn't really know it. But there's a few lines in it that I had heard before that were familiar. It, it goes under a different title yeah. sometimes. Um, yeah, and uh, and so, uh, but it was cool you know digging those up and then just you know getting a little bit of, of history on those I'll, I'll have to dig a little bit deeper into my english christmas music than when i have before because i'm always always looking for for some more um stuff to listen to and, and i really that's one of the things i just love about this album is just you know opened up like a whole new world of, of song and music to me and in such a way that you know a lot of times there's a great version of uh of wexford carol that uh, Allison Krauss did with Yo-Yo Ma, oh, really? the cellist, um, that I found. That was the inspiration for me putting it on yeah. this record, and it's fantastic. If you, you can find it on YouTube. They do like a yeah. live take. Well, usually fantastic. anything Allison Krauss is... <laughs> oh, yeah. High, oh, yeah. high, high class <laughs> music, you know. She's mm -hmm. fantastic. So she's mm -hmm. fantastic. I'd like to move on. One, one we already talked about, um, We Three Kings. I, I pulled the a little bit of section out of it because I love the way you kind of, I love the, I love what you did with the tempo of the song. Cause this song is either like fast or it's slow, but you kind of have this like false build to me. It was like a false build. It's like, I'm going to take this song. I'm going to take this song and then you drop it, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. and I just really enjoyed that because it's like, you know, like I said, it's one of my favorite songs, Christmas songs. And, and it's, you know, I've heard it slow lots of times and I, I've heard it, you know, 
but you know, bare naked lady style where, you know, it's kind of fast and cheery and stuff. And, but this is like, mm-hmm. I'm going to build it. I'm going to build it. I'm going to take it somewhere, but then nothing you, or not nothing, but you just kind of drop the floor out. And I, I really enjoyed that. And this, this section here is from about halfway through the song or so. And, uh, let's take a, take a quick listen to that. I just love how that you get you're ready to ramp up. You have that little guitar solo, at the, and it's like getting ready to take mm-hmm. off. You hear the 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 bass in there, you know, just laying it down, and then it just drops out, and it's your voice. And I just love that dynamic in that song. It just it really stood out to me. Well, you know, when you when you sing all of the verses of the song, you realize that the song is actually very melancholy. Yeah. Because it's talking about the crucifixion and, yeah. you know, the resurrection and all this stuff. It's just, stuff is to come, you know. Um, so, it, you know, there's a certain amount of joy in it, you know, especially in the opening part of it. But it does get a little grim, mm-hmm. you know, and they're not shining, they're not shining away from that. So having a, a slightly uh, more dirgy sort of beat to mm-hmm. it felt right. And also that section where the soloist is actually my original yeah. thing. Um, because I added that, that's a different progression and stuff. And so I added that in as a, a bridge. I felt like I could get away with it on that too. Yeah. Add a little bit of my own thing on there. Yeah. You know? There was one, I can't remember the song. There's one song you opened up with this like electric guitar riff and that just was the most beautiful riff. I, I, I didn't write it down. Was it Ding Dong Mary on High? Yes. 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 Okay. The, yeah. The second song. And mm-hmm. I just was, it was, your guitar playing is stellar, man. You're really, really good. Oh, thanks. And that that riff was and on that on on uh, Ding Dong Merrily on High. It was just it just grabbed me from right away. It was like, man, that's just a beautiful guitar lick and and well done. It was it was really. And it's you know it's just the melody, yeah. but it was just finding a way to work in that melody in as yeah. a guitar part. But the tone um, the tone you use works, the tone yeah. you have on your guitar is just yeah really beautiful. It's it's like it's. It's like your guitar sings instead of shreds, if that makes sense. You know, mm-hmm. and I just, I just love that. You know, anytime anybody. That was one of those. That was one of those moments where you land on, you land on a tone, yeah. and you just like, let's yeah. go, let's get it now, <laughs> yeah. because the, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna yeah, find I move, this. Yeah, I move, I move <laughs> half an inch the other way. It's gone. You know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I understand that. It's like, man, we. I used to play in, in bands here and there, and and there, there's was this one room we played at in. I don't know what it was. I don't know, but I play bass and I just had this killer low thumping bass sound all night long. And we went back like a month later and I couldn't wait to get back in there. And uh, it wasn't the same. It's, oh, it's, it's so inspiring yeah. when you get, when you have great sound, yeah. you're getting, you're getting the feedback, yeah. um, the sonic feedback yeah. from that. You can just hear that something yeah. special is going on. It just makes you a better player. It does. And yeah. I, I was so excited to go back and I, and I went back and I set up everything just like I had, I had, you know, I had the same amp and guitar and everything was exactly, you know, it was only a month or so later and I was so excited. And it's like, for whatever reason, it didn't sound like that again, you know, and it was just like, dang. So... I, I have a buddy of mine who describes that, you know, as the spirit falling, <laughs> you know, when like, you know, the, the, your, everything, you have that magical moment where the spirit falls on you yeah. <laughs> and, you know, everything yeah. is, you know, exactly the way oh, you yeah. want it for this magical yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah, I might have been, you know, like they say in the sports in the zone, it's like, I couldn't hit a wrong note, you know, mm-hmm. all night long, but then, cause Lord knows I've, I hit plenty of them all the time since then. So, but, right. but yeah, it just, it was, it was such a, great guitar tone through throughout throughout this album and and uh, i was going to ask you one thing uh, before we get to this other song is there something you know putting this album together is there something you learned putting it together that maybe you didn't you know that kind of surprised you um well i wouldn't say surprised me but i definitely you know because like i said before you have it, 
because some of the songs they don't work well mm -hmm. in a modern arrangement, you have to go with it, right. you know. And so that that puts extra challenges on you, especially you know, you know, if you're not somebody who's worked in a you know sort of more traditional or archaic music sort of environment, um, having to deal with that. Like, how do I deal with random extra beats? Mm -hmm. You know, that there's not you know there's not a direct time signature. It's just like it's a bunch of four four and then an extra beat because I want to use that word. You know, and you have to figure out how to deal with that, especially because you know I was also engineering and. You know, and playing yeah. all you know, every note on that is right. me. You know, um, and engineering it and mixing it and mastering and doing the whole thing. You know, each one of those jobs that complicates each one of those jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I edit this if it's not in a normal sort of musical world? You know, um, so that was the that was the thing. It, it's, I just got to stretch what I would what I would normally do, just because of the nature of the yeah. music. And the other thing too was the you know. You know, doing it under because the way the way that all came together for last year was because of the lockdown and everything. I had already planned on re releasing my third original solo album, which I did in, in May of last year. Um, so I was already working on that when everything started shutting. You know, all that stuff happened, and then after that happened, I was like, well, you know, I had I had all these plans to go play and you know all this you know play live and pr promote that record and do all those things, but you know, once the lockdown and everything happened. I was like, well, what do you do now? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, well, I, I, now's the time, dude. If I want to finish this Christmas right. album that I've been, you know, fiddling with for the last five, four, five, six years, now's the time to do it. Right. So trying to finish 18 songs in three or four months was, you know, and like I said, it's all me, you know, soup to nuts. That was a, you know, that was a challenge yeah. to, to get, just to get it done, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, the lockdown was one thing, but I, I have a feeling you know, as time goes on, we'll, we'll we'll get more of the benefits from it, and and that's one of that's one of the things that you know really came out of it is gave people like you a chance to get those things out, you know, there there like you wanted, and especially having to do all. I had read that you 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 know you did all the instruments and all the singing, and it's like man, mm -hmm. that's that's quite the undertaking because it's not like you're just playing the guitar part, singing the words, and then you're kind of done with it. It's like you got to relive that song you know through the bass and through the percussion and through mm -hmm. anything else you want to add you know, key all the drums and keyboards, keyboards and, and stuff so you, you and you know and there's there's songs in there you know i think i think like ding dong really on high i think at one point has like 12 different vocal tracks going yeah. on at one time and you know because there are sort of parts where it gets kind of choral right you know because i have all these different parts come on i'm trying to sort of replicate yeah what a you know chorus of me would yeah. sound like i guess you know? yeah yeah so it, you know you so you get to look at these songs through all the aspects of, of you know everybody that would be in the studio so it's like you're figuring out the song as the bass player and then you're figuring out the song as the drummer mm -hmm. and, and so you really get you know 18 songs you got to spend a lot of time with you know and uh and so. which is when you when you get to the song and like there's a song on their coventry the, the coventry carol i had originally recorded that as the a full band, uh -huh. you know, with the with all the electric guitars and drums and bass, all that. Uh -huh. And I, I went to go start sort of editing it, and I was just like, and there's a lot of stuff going on in here, and also kind of sounded like a lot of the other songs. Right. And once I sort of ripped all that stuff out, I said, I just want the acoustic guitar and the and the keyboards uh -huh. and a vocal, right? And and see what that's like. And it was just like, boom, it came along yeah. immediately. And then I then I get through a little percussion on it, and but it gives you that relief of like it doesn't all have to be full on, all right? The time. You know. Well, speaking of full on, let's let, let's move on to uh, "Angels We Have Heard on High," because oh. I, you know, we talked about like the guy stomp, you know, the stomping sound and, and and stuff, and but this song, you had the drums, and the drums were kind of the feature. You had these real booming drums in them, and and towards uh, last third of the song, it's like you, you know, I'm a uh, you probably can tell I'm a big dynamics guy. I love it when songs shift and mm -hmm. change and stuff, and it's like. The drums are present from from beginning to end. I think they're only out for a few counts at the beginning, and then once they're in, they're in. And 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 there, there was one part, you know, everybody knows "Angels We Heard From High." It's like everything drops except for the drums, and it just carries. Mm -hmm. I've never heard the song carried by drums like that before. And um, you know, doing a Christmas podcast, I get to hear a lot of the you know covers of all these different songs, and you kind of figure out what stands out and what doesn't, and you know. And I, I really liked it. So for, for those uh, 
listening and watching, let's let's play a little bit of, uh, like I said, it's the last third or so of the song of uh, Angels We Have Heard from On the High. Yeah, but that the you, you you drop out, you play that little uh, melody line on your guitar, then and then you just hit you know you have it sustain to kind of you know carry a little bit, but it's just your voice and it's those booming drums which I just loved, and uh-huh. then you just come in, you, you hit the you know you hit the uh, the, the chord on the guitar just to kind of let that sustain, and then, then that drums just keep, keep carrying it through through the verse like that, and it just it, it gives it it gives it almost almost like a slightly tribal feel. right. Yeah, you know, of, of where you have just a drum and yeah, and, and a vocal. Yeah, it does. I was think, yeah, I was thinking of uh, march is the wrong word because it's not a march, but it kind of yeah, it kind of mm-hmm. has that arena feel to it where you know it's more of like a right. you know a, a anthem might be a close close mm-hmm. word, mm-hmm. something like that. Which which you know being you know, you know if you take it you know the song lyrically for what it is you know it's like we're hearing from angels so it would be like an anthem type uh you know song or you know or tribal type song like you said where it's like you know something really is happening here and we really need to be ta- yeah. paying attention kind of thing so it's a song yeah it's a song about joy right you know it's a, you know about um you know like for the lack of a better word it's the good news right you know yeah and that and that is a big deal yeah you know to, especially to the people who were living right right you know song of hope you know here at christmas clatter we were always talking mm-hmm. about you know christmas hope and you know it's part of my goal here for to talk about christmas year round is you know to give people that hope and joy of you know christmas anytime they need it you know throughout the year well you know that hope i remember i, I was talking to uh, somebody about the, about the album but also it's sort of about christmas in general and as you know even if you know if you go look at all of the the winter solstice festivals that preceded Christmas, that Christmas sort of draws from when you're talking about Saturnalia or Yule or any of those things. Um, they all have one thing in common and it's the, the idea of light and the darkness, right. you know, that the hope at the darkest point of the year, that light will return and that you can rekindle that right. light. You know, that's why you have a Yule log burning for 12 days. Right. You know, that's why you have, the Saturnalia Festival, where you you know all the all the everything's burning, you know. So, you know, even if you're not you know you're not religious, you're not Christian, you're not celebrating it as a Christian holiday. That theme is universal, right? You know, and every winter solstice festival is all over the world. The idea of light in the darkness, right. and, and the the hope of light in the darkness is really you know you can find nothing else in Christmas that's, that's right there. Yeah, that's what, that's that's what I tell people. It's like. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to say I don't care. Whatever your religious, you know, leanings are is, is perfectly fine with me. But, you know, it's the themes that we really want to hold true to the stuff that everybody can embrace, you know, like, you know, kindness and joy and peace and, and serving others, you know, and just, you know, mm-hmm. being that, you know, people tend to be their best selves around the holidays, you know, so it's like, well, let's be our best self every day, you know, and it's, it's yeah. those themes, no matter you know, what, re- what religious leanings you may or may not have, you know, it's like, those are things that everybody should be, be able to hold on to and, and, and embrace together because they seem so, you know, basic to, to, uh, humankind that, that, uh, and, and ironically, if you go back and you, if you read anything about, uh, Roman Saturnalia yeah. and some of the things that were written at the time about it, the funniest thing is that the stuff that people complain about when it comes to Christmas now, whether it's commercialism, people partying, people not taking it seriously, mm-hmm. not people being you know pious or religious right. enough, were the exact same complaints they were doing in the first century AD in Rome about Saturn. Right. It's the funniest thing it in the is. world. It just it goes. It just they all they just go together. Right. You know, people being Scrooges. It was they're right there from the beginning. Yep. <laughs> the, the, the Puritans uh, outlawed Christmas, you know, mm-hmm. because uh, it just became such a a drunken mess and, and you know in their opinion so they they outlawed it and 
I have family members who are part of, you know, uh, Protestant groups who don't celebrate Christmas because they think it's, you know, unbiblical or sinful or really? whatever. Yeah. Wow. That's it. That's always interesting to me. Uh, you know, but uh, it, you know, if if it works for them, it works for them. But uh, mm-hmm. I just, I just love it. So, like I said before, you don't make a Christmas album without loving Christmas, especially one you know with deep cuts like you have here on Wassel. And uh, so, where do you think your love of Christmas came from? Is it something that you know you got from your family, or is it just something you kind of took up on your own and? Oh, well, I mean, you know, I had this uh, similar experience, I think, to most people with Christmas. Mm-hmm. It was a family thing. And, you know, so to me, a lot of it was about, and I think this is probably true of most people, is that a lot of the appeal of Christmas is nostalgia, right. you know, which is why people generally don't like things to be done in any kind of novel way at Christmas. Right. Like, no, you got to do it mm-hmm. the way we've always done yeah. it because it's a tradition, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, as I got older, as, I, as I've, you know, been an adult and so on, it's more about, um, it's more about the, like I said, the spirit of it and the, the, the idea of hope right? and the darkness and the idea of like, for one thing, you know, when I, the way I like to engage with the Christmas thing and when it, when it you know, comes around is like, I like the season right? more than the day, yeah. you know, I want the whole season uh-huh. of, you know, going to see concerts and going out to look at lights and, uh, seeing Christmas plays and going, you know, and like, you know, I, I wish we could bring back, you know, the 12 days right. that we, that they did back in the day and just like, just shut everything down for two weeks yeah. and just everybody just like, let's forget about making money. Mm-hmm. Forget about all Let's just like drink and eat and visit uh-huh. and carouse and enjoy ourselves for these two darkest weeks of the entire year. Um, that to me is way better. And let's, let's pack it all into one morning, right. you know, right. <laughs> Um, and I love, you know, all the decorations and all it's just like, it's like I said, the whole, the whole idea of beauty, you know, beauty in the, in the darkest, coldest time of the year is just, it just appeals. To me. Yeah. I, and also, you know, as someone who loves history, um, you, know, you look at, you know, you look at European history, um, I mean, you could go all the way back to, you know, pagan history with, like I said, with Saturnalia, Yule, all those things. But even just looking at medieval Christian history, I mean, Christmas is a big deal. Uh-huh. You know, even in even in the Middle Ages, like you look, you look at Arthurian legends. You know, there's so many of the the stories that start out at Christmas, like the Green Knight. Uh-huh. You know, starts at a Christmas feast, and Arthur basically says, "We're not going to eat until we have a wonder happen." Uh-huh. And then the Green Knight shows up, and <laughs> then they can eat. Yeah. You know, um, but you know, you know, a lot of people say, "Well, modern Christmas starts with Dickens," and I, you know. A Christmas Carol is my favorite book of all time. Yeah, um, and it really does start with that that book. But you know, you go back through history; Christmas was always a big deal. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's just, I agree with you. Uh, you know, Christmas had a little bit of a lull there. You know, before Dickens, and and I wouldn't say it started with him, but he kind of just, I think he re- reframed it. You know, from what it was, yeah. but it, it's always been a, a big deal. And I, I'm with you. I, I always tell people the anticipation for Christmas is better than Christmas itself. You know, that's why I always enjoy Christmas Eve more than Christmas, you know, not that I'd hate Christmas mm-hmm. or anything, but you know, it's just like Christmas Eve just is, there's just some magic about, you know, that day before and the anticipation. And I, I'm with you. I love, I love the, the season, you know, going to the, like the school plays with, with, you know, the kids are in or the little church, plays that that happen or you know our our local university does a big band christmas concert every year going to that and Mm -hmm. and uh, that kind of thing i just miss all that all that stuff and it's like yeah i wish that was the thing i really missed last year was not being able because i had to go to like the symphony shows right um you know we have a really big performance art performing arts complex in denver and uh one of the best you know there is and uh they have traditionally always done a, a an adaptation of a Christmas Carol every year. And I've been to see it a few times, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Like that was the thing that I really missed last year. Not so much, you know, I didn't get to travel, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but that was the things that I missed. Right. That's all the sort of seasonal things, you know? Yeah, kind of stuff. absolutely. I'm a, I, you know, being a musician, I, I have to ask you this. What's your go-to Christmas music? Okay. So Garaldi. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, because I'm also like, you know, one of the things that I have like sort of a, a list of, you know, 
things that I'm a super nerd about. Uh-huh. You know, one of them is Christmas. One of them is Charlie Brown. Right. You know, you know, even now as an adult man, I love peanuts uh-huh. because there's something very wholesome and timeless about yeah. it. And, and it's not pandering to kids. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, they're dealing with very adult things, but in a sort of kid's language, yeah. you know? Um, and I think, so I think, you know, Chuck Schultz was a genius yes. when it came to that. Um, so there's, you know, that, but like that, that Christmas album is just amazing. Yeah. But, you know, growing up, the ones that I really liked were like the, like the Johnny Mathis yeah. stuff. Cause I love Mathis's voice. Oh, yeah. you know, he's such a beautiful mm-hmm. uh, voice. Obviously the Bing, yeah. you know, um, Nat King Cole. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like that stuff. And then, you know, in the eighties, when I was, you know, when I was younger, when I was a kid, and I was first starting to develop my musical taste and you know, in terms of pop music and stuff. Yeah, you know, they did they did a bunch of these records um called a very special Christmas yep. where they had um, you know, the, the different artists. And I remember you know, hearing you too do uh you know, their Christmas cover yeah. of, Baby Please um, Come Please Come Baby, Please mm-hmm. Come Home and then Sting doing uh Gabriel's message. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those that was also a go to yeah. because it was it was cool hearing those very sort of modern takes on those songs. Right. You know, right. That was in- from artists that I really I'm really inspired by. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Those albums were real influential and getting a lot of bands to start doing Christmas music again. It was kind of falling mm-hmm. you know, to the kind of falling out of favor for you know, not, people always put out album, you know, Christmas albums every year, but it was really falling out of fla- favor with larger bands. Um you know, well, it wasn't cool. Yeah, it wasn't, you know, cool. It wasn't cool to like Christmas. Yeah, you know, yeah. you had to be, you had to smoke yeah. cigarettes and be cynical. Right, you know? right. <laughs> and you know, even uh, Barry Manilow told Clive Davis one time, he's like, "I'm not doing another Christmas album. You're going to turn me into Andy Williams," you know. Right. <laughs> so, so, so. But you know, then, then you have people like you know, like the classic thing with Bing Crosby and David Bowie. You know, David Bowie shows up yeah. and his little drummer boy with Bing Crosby, right. and it makes it cool. Again, yeah, you know, because D- Bowie does it, it's cool. Yeah, period, you know? yeah. Well, yeah. He's just one of those guys that makes everything cool. It seems like, you know, mm-hmm. so. yeah. but yeah, those uh, those eighties uh, very special Christmases were really good. And some of those bands, I wish we would have got full uh, Christmas albums out of, like you know, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I wish they would have put together a full album. You know, we got a, a couple songs from them. You know, one of them's not that deep. Of, you know, not not that much of a Christmas song that that Red Rooster song. But you know, it's like mm. I would have, I would have really like to hear a full album from from them the christmas album well i kind of i kind of got my wish with sting i guess it'll be 10 years ago now that he'd put out his uh was it 09 or 11 it was 09 actually the um the the final winter's night Uh album they did which he didn't it wasn't really a christmas album there's a lot of christmas on on it right but it's winter songs really uh but but it's also different, you know. It's like more uh, like slightly folk slash yeah. classical, you know. Um, I really dig it. Uh-huh. I know a lot of people didn't. Dig it. I really like it, um, and that was also part of the inspiration for me to do this yeah. because you know it's like, oh, he's taken this and done his own thing with it. I can, you know, yeah, I can do I can, that. I can see that. I, yeah, I don't mind those the, those type of albums where they're just winter songs because it's like, yeah, but they fit, and then you know, mm-hmm. and then you have them for that you know period after Christmas when people kind of shy away from Christmas music, but they still want, you know, kind of that same feel and sound of Christmas music, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, you know, they, they just, they just work in and and the, the winter songs are kind of one of them things that just kind of people don't do much anymore. uh, Mm -hmm. Like they used to. Well, I think it's because, I think it's because people aren't as restricted by winter as they used to be. Right. You know, um, you know, I remember actually Sting talking about this when he was making that album. You know, back in the day, you know, Christmas was a time when you stayed in and reflected and hung out with your family. Right. And you couldn't work, so you stayed inside. And that was, you know, a lot of, a lot of music was done then because that was when you could do it. That was when you had time to yeah. do it. Yeah. It, it used to be, you know, I work outside. I'm a letter carrier for the Postal Service. And the heat this, this past week has been terrible you know Mm -hmm. uh, heat indexes you know above 110 and and uh, i live in missouri and the humidity is ridiculous you know it's like trying to breathe water and it's like man you really have to pay attention you know you'll be out you know dehydrated and laid out heat stroke and all that stuff before you know it and uh but it used to be winter was the time you didn't know if you'd make it through 
you know, for mm-hmm. the winter or not, that used to be the most dangerous time. You know, mm-hmm. people, people. Were, I mean, part of the reason for that, for the feast, the solstice yeah. feast was that was your last big feast before the lean time started. Right. You know, pretty much. Right. You know, you just, <laughs> you just, you know, you were halfway done and it's like, all right, you know, we made it this far. Let's, let's make it rest of the way and, and wait for, you know, the spring to bud and, and, uh, and mm-hmm. then, and then we're good for, for another winter. But, you know, it's see, yeah, because of modern technology, winter does not, does not, you know, hamper us like it used to. You know, in fact, it's probably easier to get through than, than summertime is now, even though we don't, fortunately, we don't have too much trouble with both, generally speaking. Right. You know, mm-hmm. but, yeah, but man, I really appreciate you coming on here and uh, chatting me, uh, chatting up with me about these songs. Um, Walsall, where can people find you at, Tony? Uh, you can find me on my, my website, which is uh, tonymead.com. Um, and I'm also on all of the, the social media, Tony Mead Music on Instagram, uh, same on Facebook and the same on YouTube. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, though I don't. I use Twitter for sort of more personal things. And um, but yeah, I'm on all the things. All my entire catalog is on Spotify, Apple Music, all of the streams. You know, Amazon, Google Play, all of the things. It's, and um, it's also on uh, uh, CD Baby, and it's also on if you want to buy it or or if you prefer, you can go to Bandcamp as well. All right. And uh, for those that are driving or walking, all those links will be in the show notes and description. So you'll just be a tap, tap away from Tony and his music. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to go check out his album, Walsall. You will not be disappointed. This is a really great music. Um, it's a, like Tony's talked about his, his love of history. It's, it's a collection, you know, of historical Christmas music, some stuff that uh, we don't hear much and and it's put together uh, with a lot of love, a lot of care and a lot of skill. And I know it'd be uh, songs in here that you will add to your playlist for sure. I have a few that will be uh, popped up on the Christmas Clatter 2021 playlist, um, most definitely. And uh, for those on Spotify and Apple and uh, YouTube Music, make sure you follow Tony. Make sure you rate his music because that will help him get in his music in front of more ears that to people that have similar tastes to you to you and uh tony thanks so much again and uh if i don't talk to you between now and christmas you have a merry christmas you too it's awesome yeah. thanks and remember here on christmas clatter keep christmas hope alive every day <laughs>